I think it's important to start with how our sort of investment structure works. We have a team called BII or the BlackRock Investment Institute and this is really our, our think tank. So where a lot of our portfolio managers, a lot of our economists sit to formulate these views and they, they meet nearly every day but they really think about this on a, so a six monthly basis. But again, in a period such as this, when, when markets are moving, when economies are changing, it really has been a shift to changing these probably a little bit more often than they probably are used to doing. So we've got three themes. The first one is activity restart. Pretty self-explanatory. What is that going to look like? Every economy is different. Every economy moving at different speeds, bringing their economy back online. How does that process play out? The second one I think is again something that, that a lot of investors are probably focused on is that policy revolution. So we know that, that there's a, really a blending of monetary policy and fiscal policy and this is one of those, those times when stimulus has come and, and really helped markets along. What we are looking for now is well, what does that look like when this, when this is over? So what does the exit look like? What guardrails are being put in place? And the last one is called real resilience. And real resilience is all around how do you build a portfolio that is still resilient in an age that is around deglobalization. We're seeing a real shift in that way. So what does that look like when you're thinking about how to build portfolios in a, in a different regime than we've, we've been in, in the past? Well, we all know that the yield you used to be able to receive from fixed income or from cash is, is either negative or at, or at zero. So when you're in a situation where government bonds and specifically some of the European bonds, Japanese bonds are trading in a negative range, the, the ability for a government bond to act as a balance in the portfolio, it becomes more difficult. So we're certainly not saying that government bonds don't play a role in a portfolio, but we have got underweight them because the correlation between what used to obviously be negatively correlated, stocks and government bonds, is slowly starting to break down because the capacity isn't there uh, with, those, with those lower lower bounds in terms of the yields. Look, certainly there's, there is more relevance in Australia because there is probably an extra amount of yield that you may receive from the Australian government, uh, the government bonds. I think also to think about when you're, a, when you're a, either you know, a, a, a normal investor, a high net wealth, wealth investor, you know, not an institutional investor, you have the ability to access cash, which usually can pay potentially a higher you know, risk-free rate under, under 250000 with that government guarantee through a bank than you may be able to access through government bonds. So certainly when we think about government bonds as an overall structure in a portfolio, yes, they will remain and they will always be a place that you can access as a, as a really good softener in times when risk assets fall off. And it's certainly not to say that you, you would ever pull them completely out of your portfolio, but maybe there's other options. So one of the options we're thinking about uh, might be inflation linked bonds. If the situation does arise, then inflation starts to come back. Uh, there is the potential that that may be a suitable way to play and act as that balance in the portfolio.